Welcome dear audience students and scholars here I am Dr. Amjad Ali in this video we will learn from growth theory to growth empiric dear scholars so far as we have introduced exogenous technological progress into the shallow model to explain sustained growth in the standards of living let's now discuss what's happened when this theory is forced to confront the facts or data balanced growth According to the solo model, technological progress causes the values of many variables to rise together in the steady state. This property called the balanced growth does a good job of describing the long run data for the US economy. Consider first output per worker Y over L and capital stock per worker K over L. According to the solo model, in the steady state, both of these variables grow at uh, uh, G, the rate of technological progress. US data for the past uh, half century show that the output per worker and capital stock per worker have in fact grown at approximately the same rate, about 2% per year. To put it uh, another way, the capital output ratio has remained approximately constant over time. By talking about the balanced growth, uh, the technological progress also affects uh, factor prices. The real rental price of capital, however, is constant over time. In case of the United States, over the past 50 years, the real wage has increased about 2% per year. It has increased at about the same rate as real GDP per worker. Yet the real rental price of capital has remained uh, about the same. The solo uh, model's predictions uh, about factor prices and the success of this prediction is especially noteworthy when contrasts with the uh, Karl Marx theory of development of capitalistic economies. Marx uh, predicted that uh, the return to capital would decline over time and uh, that this would lead to economic and political crisis. Economic history uh, has not supported Marx's prediction which partly explained why one now studies Solow's theory of growth rather than Marx. Convergence. Uh, if you travel around the world, you will see tremendous variation in living standards. World's poor country have average levels of income per person that are less than one tenth. Uh, the average level in the world uh, rich country. These differences in income are reflected in almost uh, every measure of quality of life. From the number of uh, televisions and uh, telephones per household to the infant mortality rate and life expectancy. Much research has devoted to the question of whether economies converge over time to one another. In particular, one of the main questions arises here, do economies that start off poor subsequently grow faster than economies that start off rich? If they do, then the world's poor economy will tend to catch up with the world's rich economies. This property of catch up is called convergence. If convergence does not occur, uh, then countries that start up behind are, are likely to remain poor forever. The solo model makes clear prediction about when convergence uh, should occur. While talking about the convergence, uh, this, uh, according to the solo model, whether two economies will converge depends on why they differ uh, in the first phase. Uh, on the one hand, suppose two economies happen by historical accident to start off with the different uh, capital stock, but they have the same steady state as determined by their saving rates, population growth rates, and efficiency of labor. 
In this case, it should expect the two economies to converge. Uh, the poorer uh, economies with the smaller capital stock will naturally grow more quickly to reach the steady state. On the other hand, if two economies have a different steady state, perhaps uh, because uh, the economies have different rates of saving, then it should not expect convergence. Instead, uh, each economy will approach its own steady state. We have the best example here uh, after the World War II, uh, Japan and Germany experience a consistent uh, convergence toward the uh, other developed country like UK or US. In the sample of economy with the uh, similar culture and policy studies find that economies converge to one another at the rate about 2% per year. That is the gap between the rich and poor economies closes by about 2% each year. An example in the economies of uh, individual American states for historical reasons such as uh, the civil war of the uh, 1860s uh, income levels varied greatly among states at the end of the 19th century. Yet these differences have slowly disappeared over time. In international data, a more complex picture uh, emerged. When researchers examine only data on income per person, they find little evidence of convergence. Ec uh, economies or countries that start off poor do not grow faster on average than uh, countries or nation that uh, start off rich. This finding suggests that different countries have different steady state. If statistical techniques are used to control for uh, some of determinants of steady state such as saving rates, population growth rates and accumulation of human capital or education. Then once again the data show uh, convergence at rate about 2% per year. In other words, the economies of the world exhibit conditional convergence. They appear uh, to converge uh, to their own steady state which in turn are determined by such variables as saving population growth and human capital. Factors accumulation versus uh, production efficiency. As a matter of uh, accounting, uh, international differences in income per person can be attributed to either uh, differences in the factors of production such as the quantities of physical and human capital or uh, the differences in the efficiency with which economies use their factor of production. That is, a worker in a poor country may be poor because uh, he lacks uh, tools and skills or because the tools and skills he has are not being uh, put to their best use. Okay, to describe this issue in terms of the solo model, the question is whether the large gap between the rich and poor is explained by differences in capital accumulation uh, including human capital or uh, differences in the production function. Uh, much research has attempted to estimate the relative importance of these two sources of income disparities. The exact answer varies from study to study, but both factor accumulation and production efficiency appear important. Moreover, a common finding is that they are positively correlated. Nations with high levels of physical and human capital also tend to use those uh, factors efficiently. Okay, by talking about factor accumulation versus uh, 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 production efficiency, there are uh, several ways uh, to interpret this positive correlation. Uh, one hypothesis is that uh, an efficient economy may encourage uh, capital accumulation. Uh, for example, a person in a well-functioning uh, economy may have greater uh, resources and incentive to stay in school and accumulate human capital. Another hypothesis is that uh, capital accumulation may 
induce greater efficiency if there are positive externalities uh, to physical and human capital then the country that save and invest more will appear uh, to have uh, better production functions unlike uh, the research studies account for uh, these externalities which to uh, to find a hard to do that Okay, while talking about the factor accumulation versus uh, 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 production efficiency, a final hypothesis is that both factor accumulation and production efficiency are driven uh, by a common third variable. Perhaps the common third variable is the quality of the nation's institution, including the government's policy uh, making process. As one economist put it, uh, uh, when governments uh, screw up, uh, they screw up big time. Bad policies such as high inflation, excessive budget deficit, widespread market in, uh, interference and rampant corruption uh, often go hand in hand. One should not be surprised that economies exhibiting these uh, melodies uh, both accumulate less capital and fail to use the uh, capital they have uh, as efficiently as they might. So this is all about from growth theory to growth empirics. So see you with another video. Ciao.